Hello, cherished viewers. Welcome to Nedisol Training Series. We are looking at a very important topic today customer service. And I'm your trainer, Edmond Kofi Atachi. Please sit, buckle up, and prepare to learn new things and unlearn some of the things that you think um, may not help customer service and the requirement for customer service in the world today so that we can build a better service a better experience for our cherished clients and consumers so before we go into deeper things i want you to imagine serving the customer to the extent that the customer was wild so happy and give you a very positive feedback and how you felt about it imagine every client you deal with could give you such a positive feedback. We are not perfect, yes, but we are continually learning to improve on how we serve customers to delight them. And that is going to be our core or our main goal for what we are going to go through today. This is the part one that introduces customer service and the other parts will continue. So let's go on with part one. We have a view of customer service we want to put across so that when we talk about customer service, we can have uh, the same picture in mind, the same goal that we want to attain. So the first thing we want to know about customer service is the difference between a customer and a consumer. The customer is anyone that has an interaction which our business, whether before purchase, during a purchase, or after a purchase. Anyone who has an interaction with our business becomes our customer. But usually, when these customers have an interaction with us, they may be the very people who would use the services or the products they come to purchase, or it could be another person. The end user of the product or the service is the one we call the consumer. For example, if in the banking sector, I sent my daughter to do a deposit into my account. When my daughter comes into the banking hall, she becomes your customer. But supposing you treat her well, that she's so happy, but the transaction she made, even though she has a receipt that it has been done, did not reflect and I am not able to get the money to do the purchases I want to do online and all that. You would have given me the bad experience. Even though you gave the customer that entered the banking for the good experience, you had given me, the end user, a bad experience. So if you are selling products, uh, let's say a phone, then I walk into your shop and buy the phone. I'm the customer there. But if I'm going to use the phone, then I'm also the consumer. But if I'm not going to use the phone, but I'm giving it to a friend, the friend becomes the consumer. It doesn't matter the kind of service you give me. If the phone does not meet the requirements that the end user, who is my friend, demands, and he doesn't like it, uh, there are poor things about the phone, then you should give me a good experience as your customer but the end user the consumer has not had an experience a good experience so because of that customer service wants to go beyond customers to also include consumers so that when we are serving our customers we also have our consumers at the back of our head the end users so that we can give an overall good experience to our customers and our consumers so that we can have uh, repeat purchases we can increase uh, the number of sales and we can even do upscaling and cross-selling and upselling all very good. So another group we want to look at are potential customers and existing customers. Usually when we talk about customers, people go to look at existing customers. People who come and do transactions with us or buy from us, who purchase our services, our customers. Yeah. But there are people who also meet who may not purchase from us, but who could become our customers in the future. Those people are what we call 
prospects or prospecting customers, potential people who can become our customers. Now, when you remove the word potential, you are talking about customers. When you remove the word existing, you're talking about customers. So both potential and existing customers are customers. So when we talk about customers, we shouldn't concentrate on only the existing. We should also concentrate on the potential. So first, I'm in my branded uniform, and I go out of the office, and I meet anybody who wants to question me. I should treat that person as a customer. Some, sometimes we have the notion like, why are you worrying me? What are you worrying? Go to the office and go and ask questions. No. You represent the business, and you are the business. So anybody who meets you in the name of the business is a customer. And you have to treat the person as a customer. So we should have it at the back of our mind that our customers are not only our existing customers, but also the potential ones. And we should treat them with the best service, the best experience we can. Another group of customers we should look at is the external customers and internal customers. Anytime we talk about customers, we quickly think about external. But you see, the people we work with are also customers. Imagine I'm an IT technician and I work with a business, a bank that serves clients. Now, the clients I'm serving are the staff who need their IT support systems to work so that they can serve the customer or the external customer. So they have become, these internal people have become my customers. So at a point in time, in the business, those who need our services and support have become our internal customers. And the outsiders, who are those we usually see as the customers, are the external customers. So what am I drawing up? Anybody you meet, whether in your business or outside the business, are your customers. Whether existing or potential, are your customers. So when we talk about customers, we want you to have the mindset that everybody I meet is a customer. Whether potential, existing, internal or external, are customers. And what do we know about these customers? We are paid to serve them. The business exists because of them. The reason we are in business is because of them. Imagine I have a nice office, good people, good employees, and there's no customer to serve. There's no one to buy our products. There's no one to purchase our services. So we are not in business. So businesses exist because of customers. And you see, we are not paid by our bosses just because they have money. It is when they make revenue from our sales, whether it's our services or our products, after the sales, they make revenue, they make profit, they are able to pay us. So those who actually pay us are the customers. Customers pay the business and the customers pay us. So our real bosses are the customers. For example, if I'm the boss and the branch manager of a bank or a telecom company or a school, if I'm taking away, it goes up. The service goes up, the school goes up, the bank goes up. But imagine now customers say we are no more patronizing. What happens? We cannot be in business. So the real boss of every business is a customer. So let's bear in mind customers are the king and the queens they are and they deserve to be and should be treated as such. Now, when we talk about customer service, we want to look at what the service is. A service is what you give in addition to a product or services in itself which are intangible. So when I'm selling a product, I'm giving you a support, I'm giving you a service. We should see that they are intangible things, but they actually affect emotions. They affect people. And they are usually in real time. So services should be considered as real time things. And when we make mistakes, it is difficult to turn back the hand of time. So they should be done right the first time as much as possible. 
even though we can work on apologizing and all that, the experience we give someone at every interaction should be seen, that interaction should be seen as a real time thing and should be treated as something that one is lost, could not be gotten back. Even though we can later work on improving and all that, that the experience we cannot take back. So we should be treated as one. Real time event. So one thing we should talk about them is uh, services and the support we get from representatives, people, employees, colleagues. But that is not all. The self service systems, our applications, our robots, and how they also respond to customers and their interactions with customers, how people react and interact with our websites, our online tools, our digital channels. They are also services. So customer service is not limited to owning the employees and how they serve people or serve one another, but also our self-service systems and applications and how user-friendly or the good user experience they give to our customers. So when we talk about customer service in general, we're talking about the individual interactions that people have with our business, the individual interaction. It could be an interaction before a purchase, it can be an interaction during a purchase, or interaction after a purchase. Each interaction is a service, but we could have an overall experience of all the interactions, which gives us a customer experience. It gives the customer an impression of the business or the brand from throughout the customer's journey. So from uh, before the purchase, during the purchase, and after the purchase, the customer has an impression of the whole journey. And that is what we call customer experience. So when we say customer service, we don't want to end at the individual interactions, but we should also know that the individual interactions sum up to a whole experience. So we don't only really have the individual interaction in mind, we have the whole experience in mind to give customers an overall good and excellent experience. Now, so it's not limited to people. It's also limited, it also includes our channels, our self-service systems, our user-friendly applications, how user-friendly they are, and the kind of user experience that they give out to our customers. So our social media channels, our digital channels, all our channels to the market, and all our touch points. Anytime a customer touches us, we want to give the customer a certain level of service or experience as customer service. So something we can draw from the introduction to customer service is that Customers are the real bosses of every business. And whatever treatment and respect we give our bosses, in as much as we want to please our bosses, we should please our real bosses, which are the customers, a double time. And customers pay us, whether internal or external, existing or potential, they are our customers. And we need to give them an overall experience not only having the customers in mind, but even the end users who are the consumers. So let's brace ourselves on how we can give customers a very satisfying experience with every touch point they have with our business. Thank you.